Well, what is happening now in Gaza for the last couple of weeks is genocide. What does Israel mean to you? Does Al-Aqsa have to be destroyed? These are the Jews who were living alongside the Palestinians under the Ottomans uh, for hundreds of years and before. We're hurting and crying with the suffering now of the Palestinians. Yeah. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. I pray this finds you well and blessed and that you're holding it together with a strength of Iman, belief and hope in your heart about the horrible atrocities in Gaza and in the West Bank coming to an end and justice being done. That's what we have to hold on to. So this week I'm sharing a video about time I spent with three rabbis from the US, Rabbi Rosenberg, Rabbi Feldman and Rabbi Weiss. And they came a long way, all the way to Istanbul from New York, just to have their voices heard in the movement against Zionism. Well, this video is about my time with them, and it contains a couple of statements that I really think you should know, and I have found really important in my understanding of how, how are we going to work our way through this wickedness, this awful mess of humanity right now, and how are we going to uh, find common common cause as human beings. Meeting Rabbi Weiss again, we've traveled together before, mashallah. I consider him a friend, alhamdulillah. He's a lovely, lovely man. But his words took me back to a time 20 years ago when I didn't have an understanding about who Naterai Carter, the real Torah Jews were and what they stood for. And basically I had been on a rally in Manchester, I think it was. And there were some of the two rabbis from Naterai Carter there. And they kept talking about only a little bit at that time about the human rights of the Palestinians. And they kept talking about how their religion said Israel can't exist. Their religion said this, their religion said that. God doesn't want Israel to exist in this form, at this time, in this way. La, 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 la. And they were treated really, really well by everybody there. And I wasn't impressed by the message at the time. So I spoke to one of the rabbis on the train back. We shared a carriage. And I said, I've got to tell you, it's time you joined the human race. Because what you've been saying is all about your face and not enough about human rights. That's number one. And secondly, who cares what your version of God says? This is about humanity. Okay, I still accept one of the points that I made. But the tone deafness on my part was this. Why does it hurt the rabbi so much that the non-state of Israel is formed in their name? Well, here's a question to my Muslim followers and viewers on this channel. Why did it hurt you and I so much when ISIS was ripping through communities and doing appalling acts and saying Allahu Akbar? Do you remember that feeling? I remember that gut-wrenching, <gasps> please don't let them chop off a head and say Allahu Akbar. Please don't let them beat these people in the street and say Allahu Akbar. It was horrific because not only were these acts vile, but it's done in the name of purity and goodness. Allah, so now I get it. Watch me travel down the streets of Istanbul with the rabbis, protesting for our brothers and sisters, specifically in Gaza, but across the whole of Palestine. In our faith, Ahl Kitab means both the people whom God has revealed books to, but also those who are described as communities of safe haven. When the Prophet Muhammad's followers struggled with oppression in Mecca, he, peace be upon him, said, If you were to go to Abyssinia, it would be better for you, for the king will not tolerate injustice, and it is a friendly country, until such time as Allah shall relieve you from your distress. In those times, Abyssinia was a Christian state. So in times like these, those of us who fear the wrath of one just God and pray for his mercy and guidance must come together in a fight for freedom, just as Muslims and Jews have coexisted and flourished side by side for centuries under Islamic rule. We will continue to do so in light of the beauty of the teachings of our faith. In the morning, after breakfast with our guests, who could not eat due to their strict dietary laws, by the way, I had an honest conversation with Rabbi Weiss about the history of Jewish-Muslim harmony, the origins of the so-called Jewish state, and the reality of religious communities under Zionist rule. So, we know that you are anti-Zionist Jews, but how do you feel about what is going on in Gaza now? Uh, our feelings, this is, you can't, 
this we can't describe. This is something, you know, it's in the heart of the Jewish people around the world. Uh, for us, this is a Nakba, but it's a double Nakba, in a manner of saying, because it, this, this terrible crime, this terrible, uh, horrendous catastrophe, this murder, this mass murder, is not only being perpetrated you know, against God, but it's being done in the name of God, in the name of my religion. So the, the feeling is, is again, it's, you can't describe such words because it's, it's frustration, hurt, deep hurt, and, 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 just, and that we don't, we don't know what we can do besides that what we're doing all the time of demonstrating, speaking up, pleading with the, with the world leaders. For instance, we go to by the United Nations, which I'm, I live in New York, so we constantly, uh, every single week, a good few times during the week, my different uh, groups of us go out to the United Nations pleading, attempting to get to the ears of the world leaders uh, that they should understand that they must, they must, they must stop. Uh, this terrible crime that's being perpetrated in the name of Judaism, while Judaism is clearly uh, opposed to the, the, not permit to kill or steal, and to the whole concept of creating the state of Israel is totally antithetical. That's kind of against the words of Judaism. Uh, have you been to Gaza? Because this is a war against Hamas. We are being told by the Zionist news agencies, by all the mainstream news, uh, Hamas went to, to Gaza. Um, more than once and when I went there we were embraced by the people and the leadership um, I carry around pictures um, uh, this is this is not that but this is the history of how we live together in peace and 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 these are the people actually the next generation their children and so forth this is in Gaza where we are meeting with the leadership this is with the Prime Minister uh, Ismail Khania and um, we, we brought um, a, a medical aid and they pr presented us with a, a, a hand uh, knit uh, flag of Palestine yeah. we went, and we went and we cried with them we went to the hospitals to visit the sick and everybody embraced us you see the, 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 uh, the large hearts the, the super large hearts of the people that although they were bombed they were maimed, they were ruined their lives, yet they embraced us. We walked into the hospital as Jews and they embraced us. Why? Because they understood that, that this is nothing to do with the conflict between Jews and Muslims, between uh, the religion Judaism and Islam or the people of the Jewish faith. Our history has been so, for so many hundreds of years living together. Um, any, any other person uh, who's an uh, of the, uh, older generation would be able to tell personal anecdotes how we helped each other, beautiful stories of coexistence. How did you find the people of Gaza when you went? What is their characteristic? That, what, what will you remember about Gaza? The, the friendship, the, 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 the anxiousness that they should, that we should feel comfortable. I and mean, it was just above and beyond. And they were so nice, so friendly. And um, uh, and Hamas, by the way, was so anxious that <laughs> that God forbid somebody shouldn't, by mistake, you know, just come along and 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 who maybe wasn't educated enough and you know and think you know a Jew and unfortunately uh, and something should happen. But it didn't happen. We were there, um, as I say, more than once, and we can't. We met with uh, a lot of places. We went around in Gaza, and they were. But that said. We can't, we, uh, we're not blind to the fact that the Zionism, with what they're doing, obviously will create hate and does create hate. What and does Israel mean to you? Israel is the worst cancer, the worst catastrophe that could befall the Jewish people. And this is not my opinion. This is what our great leaders, the chief rabbi of Palestine, not to be confused with the Israeli rabbinate and the chief rabbis, which is just another facet of the, <coughs> the, uh, of the masquerade of the facade that Israel uses. Now, Alexa, but we understand um, and we know that the Prophet, peace be upon him, Muhammad, went there and was raised by God. This is, this is in our understanding and our knowledge. And so the whole area has, for more than a thousand years, been a place of worship for the Muslims. But the Zionists say it's the place of the temple. Where does your uh, Neteri Karta stand on the rising of the, th of the temple again? Does Al-Aqsa have to be destroyed in your understanding? Muslim, right? Jews and Muslims have a distinctly different religion. There's no question yes. we have a, dis a, dif a different belief. And yet, we, we, when we were being uh, tortured, we were being uh, oppressed and uh, murdered in Europe, 
by the Inquisition, by the Crusades and so forth, the Jews uh, were banished from the land, we ran away, we were, and we were taken in and embraced by the Muslim lands, and we flourished there as distinctly uh, practicing Jews amongst um, uh, practicing Muslims, and the Muslims had scholars, contrary to what the world <laughs> thinks, you know, that it's only by, uh, in, in the Judeo Christian they call society, but they were full of scholars and they knew my religion, they knew Judaism, and they weren't, uh, and it did not, it, it wasn't an impediment or any problem that they took us in, the Muslim countries took us in, even though we would distinctly have a different belief system. One of them is what you just mentioned what will be the Al Aqsa, the issue of Al Aqsa? Now, let me explain to you. We believe that, uh, I mean, our history is that King Solomon built the temple. God took us the Jews out of Egypt. We were required to go into the Holy Land. We were required to build a temple. King Solomon built a temple and then it was destroyed. There was a second temple and it was destroyed by the Greeks, by the Romans, basically. And then we were sent into exile and we, we were, um, because we were not on the level of holiness we were supposed to be. Once it came destroyed, we are forbidden to return to the Holy Land and, go, and Mass to go back. Now the Temple Mount, were, were, since that time of the destruction of the Temple, Jews are forbidden to go to that whole area, step into that area behind, beyond the Wailing Wall or the Western Wall, what you would call, because that's the outer perimeter that was the wall that remained from the whole Temple, that was the only piece that remained. Inside of that is forbidden for Jews to go into that area, at the, punishable by one of the worst punishments in Judaism that were cut off from God. It's called kores, means we're cut off from God. So Jews we believe that when Messiah will come, the Almighty Himself, without any human intervention, will build the Temple. Will it be in that area? Uh, we believe 100% it will be in that area. Does it jive or, uh, uh, with, together with the Muslim belief? 100% it doesn't. But that's an issue, a metaphysical co concept, mm. of a change that will be not with the human intervention. Mm. The Almighty, in the future, when He'll make that there will be a, a, a spirit of repentance that will stop being atheists. And it says, All the nations will join arms together and serve God in harmony, we believe. Not become Jews. But all the nations will join arms together and God will build the temple. So we have a definitely a distinctly different belief system than the Muslims, but it's never a threat for Islam or the Muslims. So we because all, we're taught, that's just one example of the grat. We're taught to give grat. We know that the Muslim countries took us and we know we flourished amongst them. How dare the Zionists vilify the Palestinians because they want to, for the for the narrative to, to create their state, they'll have to vilify the people that are living there and call them anti-Semites and call this a religious conflict when it's totally not that. The, the ones who are anti-Semitic is the Zionist state of Israel. They created this state against the will of the indigenous Jews that were living there. We have pictures. These are the Zionists with Ben-Gurion, David Ben-Gurion. Um, reading the Declaration of Independence in Independence Hall. Now remember, he's making a Jewish state, Star of David, calling it the State of Israel. He was, um, they were all anti-religion and, and they're make, making a Jewish state supposedly because God gave us the land, we have the right to the land. Uh, what a farce, what, what, uh, what an evil this is. Uh, they lived together in total harmony, they lived in the same courtyards, they babysat each other's children. They, this is a, this is a, a you know, this is how they used to uh, live together. This is a part of the Jewish, uh, there's so many tens of thousands of pictures like that from the Muslim community and the Jewish community. We lived in peace. The Zionists, on the, on, uh, but, uh, but they can't take our religious community that was living there. They brutally beat them, they brutally arrest them. Um, you can see it's army. It's, we're not talking about uh, um, police, we're talking about the military here. Yeah. And Gaza. And, and so basically, yeah. I just want to make this clear. These are the Jews who were living alongside the Palestinians under the Ottomans uh, for hundreds of years and before. So their community has been set and they were happy and safe, as right. the rabbi has told us. And there was no conflict and there was no competition for the land. And permission was given to pray at the, uh, what they call the, as they call the Wailing Wall. And they used to go through the wak out of respect for um, the, the Palestinian Muslim organizations there. These are the people of the land as well but these Zionists this political regime right. that has hijacked Judaism and is murdering and is killing and is the most vicious cult on earth this is what we are united in calling an end to yeah. and may God give peace to the Palestinians and victory to, to, the, to the good people the Palestinians the Muslims who looked after the Jews for centuries please God yeah, inshallah, I inshallah, say, yeah. inshallah. Yeah, and God will help. God will help. God is great. God is the most powerful. 
and in our Torah it says, why are you rebelling against me? It will not be successful. We are certain that this will end. We only pray to God because God is the most compassionate and uh, that he should bring the end speedily and peacefully, which he can because God is capable of everything. And, um, and then we will look for that day when we should turn to the Palestinians and say, here's your lives back, here's your respect, and that, that we can live together as we've had so for all many hundreds and hundreds of years. We're hurting and crying with the suffering now of the Palestinians. Yeah. Thank you. I got really emotional at the end of that discussion with the rabbi because he was envisioning, and this is something we all need to do, a time when this part of history is over for the Palestinians, when there is beauty and the olives will grow again and their harvests will be able to be brought home with the songs that they've passed down orally, that there will be joyous Eids again without the colonizers on their land. And Rabbi painted a really beautiful picture of the original Jews being a part of that makeup of the Holy Land, Yarab. And this is something we need to focus on as well, visualizing the day after Zionism ends, praying for it, praying for it and a good future together. Okay. alaikum. So I'm here with uh, Rabbi Feldman of Naterai Carter. We are about to gather for a protest against the Zionist murder, the mass murder and genocide against the people of Gaza. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. I want to understand your position as an anti-Zionist religious Jewish person. What do you feel right now about what is happening in Gaza? Well, what is happening now in Gaza for the last couple of weeks is genocide, which is mass murdering so many innocent men, women and children. We always say that it's not only uh, criminal according to international law. This is truly crimes against Jewish law. It's not only for the past two months, which is criminal, which is wrong, which is anti-Jewish. It is basically just a continuation of this so such a long, over 75 years of brutal occupation. And it's a true desecration of God's name when the Jewish religion is being misused to justify all these crimes. I visited Gaza twice after the beginning of the siege. Uh, it was disturbing, it was sad, it, was, it brought tears to our eyes to see what was going on already then in 2009. It is sadly so much worse today. It was worse even before two months ago, but in the last two months it's, it's, it's a total disaster. Uh, there is no way to justify these crimes and certainly not to misuse the Jewish religion to justify all what is going on. Assalamu alaikum. So listen, activism doesn't have a day off uh, when our brothers and sisters are being murdered and occupied and displaced. And I am here in Istanbul with brothers from the Terai Karta, anti-Zionist uh, Jewish rabbis, mashallah, and we're going to be going on a march that starts from Bayezid Square, inshallah, to Hagia Sophia. This is Istanbul today. Gaza, it's not enough. We're doing what we can. We're doing what we can. This is Ali, he's 15 years old, mashallah, and he's here for Gaza today, and the whole of Palestine. Free Palestine! Free Palestine! Free, 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 free Palestine! From the river to the sea! From the river to the sea! Palestine will be free! Palestine will be free! Takbir! Allah! Subhanallah, this is actually the first march for Palestine that I've been on where it's majority Muslims. And the feeling is charged with pain and resistance and anger at these American products and businesses here in Istanbul. Um, never thought I didn't like it because I normally protest in London, right? Where, alhamdulillah, we have our way of doing things in the UK. But it's a much more charged atmosphere here. Very interesting. We travelled together and joined the Turkish people rallying against the genocide in Palestine. And the rabbis got a lot of attention for their attendance. And some of it was quite confused and even suspicious. But ultimately, we all marched together with the one shared conviction of one almighty and just God who warned us, his servants, against committing injustice on the earth. You know what? Alhamdulillah, that was a beautiful day. And I had so much respect 
for those uh, brothers, those rabbis. They were walked for miles. They're over 60s, a couple of them, subhanAllah. They were so steadfast in what they were doing. They stayed right to the end. Is there anything else we can do for Gaza? Is there anything else we can do for Palestine? Is there anyone else who'll speak to us? Is there anyone else who'll hear our message? That this is not Judaism, that this is not about Jewishness. Jewishness uh, is something different to Judaism. It's become separated. It's like secular Muslimness. And they feel that their faith is hijacked. And I think these are very brave people. And I pray for us to work together, all religions together, all people of goodness together, to end the cancer of Zionism and to free, free Palestine. If you like these videos, do subscribe. I love your comments below as long as they're polite. And uh, yeah, let's move forward to a better future, inshallah.